Fasciocutaneous and osseofasciocutaneous flaps can be raised on either the radial or ulnar arteries. An 8 by 4 cm radial artery flap can be raised distally and the donor defect closed with an ulnar transposition flap. Dissection is best begun on the ulnar side and may include palmaris longus to improve the vascularity of this side of the flap. Dissection is continued towards the radial artery until the fasciocutaneous perforators are seen going up towards the skin. On the radial side of the flap, the cutaneous branches of the radial nerve must be identified and preserved. Again, the fasciocutaneous perforators can be seen here. It is useful to include a cutaneous vein as well as the venae comitans running with the radial artery to give another option for microvascular anastomosis. Deep perforators can be seen extending through the flexor pollicis longus to supply the radius. These are the basis of the osseofasciocutaneous flap which needs to be harvested along with a cuff of this muscle. One third of the thickness of the bone can be harvested between the insertions of pronator teres and brachioradialis. It is best to make the bone scaphoid shaped to minimise the risk of fracture. A very long vascular pedicle can be obtained. The resulting donor defect can be closed with an ulnar transposition flap based on the fasciocutaneous perforators arising from the ulnar artery.